Hello everyone. I wanted to share some information about the movie that we're going to be watching this week. It's considered by many to be the greatest film ever made, the greatest American film ever made. Uh, that's kind of a big claim. But it's Citizen Kane, directed by Orson Welles, made in 1941. And I just want to share some information about the story, about the film language, and our goal this week is to watch this film over the week uh, and annotate it with some notes, some ideas, um, some observations that you make. There is, besides watching the movie, a short reading assignment, a short reading response, and a short discussion assignment. I love watching this movie with students every year. It's certainly going to be dated a bit. The acting styles are going to be fairly unfamiliar, I think. It feels more like theatrical acting uh, from the theater rather than film acting. But film was very early on in its stages at this point. And this film revolutionized many techniques. And there's just so many amazing things to, to see in this film. Uh, Roger Ebert, who you're going to read a little bit from about Citizen Kane, uh, he since passed away a number of years back, but he used to once a year watch this movie with film students, and they would <laughs> they would literally pause it after every shot and discuss what they were seeing in terms of the camera angles, the lighting, the mise-en-scene, the shot type. Um, they usually take about nine hours <laughs> to do that. I'm not going to make you do that, but I do want you to watch the film. The film's available on Swank, which is uh, a library database that you have access to by being an SMCC student. And you'll see in the week six content folder a short video that shows you how to get to Swank, which is a strange name for a library database. but. Um, it has 50 films there that you can watch. They're all pretty great movies. Some that we've already seen uh, elements of. Do the Right Thing, 12 Angry Men. Um, and we're going to use Swank another time in the semester. And uh, you can watch Citizen Kane there. There's also other places you can certainly watch Citizen Kane. You can rent it using a streaming service. You can get it from a library. You can get it fairly cheaply from the uh, from any kind of store. Bull Moose has a couple copies. I was in the South Portland store a few weeks back and saw some um, Citizen Kane copies. You're seeing my dog back there. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about Citizen Kane. And Orson Welles, the great Orson Welles. He comes from radio. He was very young when he made this first film. He had already had a lot of success with his radio production company. Um, and when you're watching the movie, listen to the sound. Uh, it is, it's, the sound design in this film is extraordinary. And even the actors' voices, I think, are done in a more uh, radio-esque kind of way. Uh, he was born in 1915. He died in 1985. He's very famous for his War of the World radio broadcast. That was so uh, revolutionary that and so impressive that it actually caused some people to panic and think that aliens had landed and were taking over the United States of America. He was an experimental theater director. He did an all-black voodoo Macbeth in New York City that caused a bit of excitement. He was given an unprecedented contract as a novice director. He had complete artistic control over this film. It really is an expression of his idea of the story. He's credited with writing it, but that credit uh, was taken from someone named Herman Mankiewicz. There's a great David Fincher film that just came out about Mankiewicz, um, if, you, if you're interested in that. Uh, it's based... Loosely on the life of William Randolph Hearst, who was a huge media tycoon, a, a Ted Turner, um, Jeff Bezos, one of those huge company owners. Uh, Hearst owned both radio stations, movie theaters, and newspapers. Uh, it opened in 1941 at, the, at, at a real... Uh, it was amazing that the film even came out. William Randolph Hearst did everything he could do to destroy it because it presented the life of William Randolph Hearst, in particular his mistress, in an unfriendly light. Uh, William Randolph Hearst, like I said, was, in, was a uh, media tycoon, one of the first, 
Born in 1863, dies in 1951. He owned many newspapers, many radio stations. He was famous for inventing news. Um, he uh, famously said when war correspondent and illustrator Frederick Remington telegraphed from Cuba that no war between Cuba and America was imminent, Hearst is said to have responded, please remain, you furnish the pictures, and I'll furnish the war. He was a congressman for two terms, and he routinely invented sensational stories, faked interviews, ran phony pictures, and distorted real events. Sorry for my dog whining. Um, I wonder what that's like. Inventing sensational stories and distorting real events. I feel like a lot of the themes in Citizen Kane even resonate powerfully today. When Citizen Kane came out, he offered $800,000 for the studio to destroy it. He banned every newspaper he owned, every radio station to talk about it. He was very upset by, his, by the portrayal of his mistress. Um, he even tried to set up Orson Welles in a love triangle situation where the news would expose him for having an affair. Um, he fought so hardly against the film that he's now unfortunately for him, forever linked to it. Now, why do we watch Kane? Um, you're a film student. You know why we watch Kane, because it's the greatest film ever made. That's what people say. Citizen Kane is often cited as being one of the most innovative works in the history of film. In 2007, the AFI Institute placed it at its number one. Um, it kind of goes back and forth by critics, but don't just listen to this old film professor. Let's listen to William Friedkin. The great director of The Exorcist. If you haven't seen that, it's a fantastic one. The French Connection is another classic of his. What does he have to say about this? Another film on that list is Citizen Kane, of course, written and directed and starring uh, Orson Welles. Well, there's a lot of controversy about the writing. Most of the script was written by Herman J. Magowitz. Okay. But the vision behind the film is Orson Welles. It was his first film. He was 25 years old and he revolutionized world cinema. You can mark the change in cinema from before Citizen Kane to after Citizen Kane because it synthesized everything in terms of technique that came before and it pointed the way to the future. I I've seen that almost 200 times. Wow. And do you continue to see new things in this film in the 198th time? Yes, I do. Uh, even though I now know how every shot was made, I continue to see details that I hadn't noticed before. Little touches here and there, almost like the, those great Islamic tapestries that you see that are filled with so many details, yet you can stand back and look at the overall and be wowed. The films I've mentioned, especially Citizen Kane, inspired me. And to be honest with you, it's what keeps me going. I hope to one day, I'm now 76 years old, but I hope one day to make a film that could be mentioned in the same sentence with Citizen Kane. For William Fitch